you ever had a bulk or a lean bulk? Me now. Have I've, you ever I've, had... I've done one, yes. Um, I had 2,800 calories. Talk, let's, let's shout about the mental <laughs> effect. No, that I that loved had. it. It's, I loved it. For me, that was one of my... It was one of the phases where I actually felt the most confident. I'm going to agree with you there, yeah. Paul, Lara, welcome to the podcast. Thank, Thank you, you for, for having, having us. us. Yeah. Absolutely. So, Paul, I'll start with you. Give me a bit of a introduction, background on you. All right. So, my name's Paul, Paul Jordan, Paul Jordan, depending on how you want to pronounce <laughs> it. <laughs> um, 22 years old. And um, if I have to explain what I do for a living, uh, I'll say social media and media and events. I uh, used to live in Pretoria, um, where after I moved to Joburg for a bit. Actually, I made a kind of like a run through the entire country and then placed myself, anchored myself in Cape Town for the past about year and a half. Um, how I started off, I started off doing fitness. Fitness has allowed me to grow to the person that I am today, growing my social media accounts, growing my platforms, and that has allowed me to tap into what I'm doing today and what I, what I actually love doing today, which is social media, media, and events, the companies that I currently have under my name. So yeah, that is basically a rundown of what I do, where I'm from. And yeah, I think we'll dive into the finer details of it a little yeah. bit later. Mm. Lara? My name is Lara, Lara Falk, and I'm an international health and fitness coach. I basically coach clients online, internationally. And to sum it up, um, I'm a business owner, entrepreneur, and it's always been my goal to, you know, be independent and work for myself. Never wanted to be that person that needs to tell someone, listen, hey, I need to go. So the drive has always been there to, you know, just work for myself and, and build a, a company around that. So I have my own company. Apart from that, also launched a meal prep business in the beginning of the year. So the two really goes hand in hand with the fitness and the health and the ladies being able to, even the public, being able to order healthy food, wholesome, nutritious meals. And not just, I would say, changing lives through health, but also through wealth in a way, which, um, yeah, is, it's a lot of doors has opened. I think we will dive into that a little bit later. But yeah, in a, in a nutshell, I would say I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, boss woman, and just... Living life it. on my terms. Own it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and how, how do you two know each other? So we've actually met at an event mm. where one of my companies um, helped organize mm. in the start of the year. It was a yacht um, party. It was a yacht party in Clifton. And uh, funny enough, I was the one doing the content on the day, like the video and everything behind the scenes. And then for some reason, we just started having you know good chats and like yeah, ended up having a chat the for like conversation 30, 40 minutes. started flowing yeah and we're just like chatting there about everything and what we do mm. and yeah i think from there on forward we stay we just stayed connected i think what what really made us stay connected is because when i found out you know he's with similar age because i'm 23 and i was like you know the way you you communicate and the way you are as a person i mean that you don't really see that especially on if someone is in such mm. a young age and i think from there because we also have similar interests um we yeah we could easily speak and the communication just started to flow yeah, you definitely don't see a lot of people that within the same age vicinity as us mm. who are <laughs> who are kind of doing i, I want to i don't want to say doing much but most of them are studying yes. right and then they want to go and get jobs i know a lot of my mates from school yeah. have gone overseas mm. so I think I in think my opinion I don't think there's anything wrong with it there's nothing wrong with it um, I just think this in my opinion I think there is more to life mm. and there's different ways of you know getting to where you want mm. and I think it's at the end of the day in today's age you know risk is the new safe mm. especially now in the days that we're living and you know if there's if you have a passion or you want to do something you want to get somewhere and you're afraid to take that risk it won't always be awarded you know what you want to accomplish well, maybe not immediately well, maybe not immediately in time mm. in time yes it all depends on your drive and whether you want it within a year or whether you want it in five years or whether you want it in 10 years but um, i mean we, we get it a lot you know being people saying like how how can you be where you are at such a young age mm. but it's like paul said it really is about we it, it's more than just that motivation and the drive to be some mm. like we have an end goal and it's it's sad to say unfortunately people don't want to take the risk it's it's not necessarily that you have to start your own company or have to have your own business. It's not about that that like that's the route you need to take in taking a risk. There are many ways of taking risks, yeah. but yeah, unfortunately, not willing or to, not many are willing to do that. 
I think maybe people are afraid of other people's judgment and opinions on that. Mm. Mm, and uh, one mm. thing I've learned at a young age, which allowed me to mature much quicker, is actually to like not give a damn of what other people think. Mm. Pursue what you want, pursue your passion, and then that's going to be... At, at the end of the day, you only have yourself and yourself to be proud of. Yeah, I think when you're in your 20s as well, it's when you need to take the most risks, mm. right? So I think the worst thing you can do in your 20s is be very conservative. Yeah. Mm take the easy route because mm. at the end of the day once you hit your 30s maybe you have a family and you now really have to settle down that opportunity to go out there and just try doing anything it's, mm. it's pretty much over yeah i actually want to add to that so if you are in your let's say you, you're going into your 30s and you let's take starting your own company or business brand as an example i feel like when you're in your 30s and older it's a lot harder to to grow and build something new mm. as in if you start much younger because you're entering a market and you're entering um you know there's there's a lot of eyes on you being that age and wanting to start something because there's a lot of expectations as in you already need to be perfect because remember you, you're 30 or 35 now wanting to start a business where if you're already young people allow you that time to grow if you're not doing something 100 perfect they know it's she's still newbie or he's still newbie they will get there but i feel like when you're 30 and 35 and you haven't you know, when you were younger, decided to take that risk earlier, it's just a lot harder to to get there. But it is possible. But I feel like there's a lot of pressure for someone that's older to start something mm. because of all the pressure, aren't they? So I want to ask you guys about the fitness side of things. Yeah. Mm. So m for most people, when it comes to their fitness journeys, there's always an origination. So for mm. me, my whole life, I played soccer, football, um, and I, I did quite well, eventually went overseas. And that ultimately throughout that journey, that's when I started training. Now, I'm not obviously on the level you guys are mm. in terms of what I'm doing with it, but it's a big part of my life. Yeah. Make sure I'm at the gym every single morning. If I don't go to the gym, I know it has a big impact on my day. And that's yeah. just from a lifestyle aspect. So you guys more than anything understand beyond health and wellness, the importance of it, especially from a mental point mm. of view. Mm. So give me kind of your kind of opinions on that as well. You want to go first? I think yeah. Okay. So in my opinion, the way you... One of the ways you can market yourself is just by the way you present yourself physically, mm -hmm. right? So you could tell a lot about a person's confidence within themselves, about their mental state, uh, just a lot. You can almost tell exactly what type of person you're dealing with just by the way they treat their own body, yes. right? So mm -hmm. a healthy person, a person who looks after themselves, you can ma immediately see what type of person it's a he or she is. Um, if I have to take, for instance, if you take a female bodybuilder or you take a male bodybuilder, being in a percentage, body fat percentage range between, let's say, 8 or 8 and 12 or 8 and 15 percent, that takes a lot of, it takes work. It takes mm -hmm. a lot of work, dedication towards their nutrition, dedication towards training, even dedication towards their resting days. Mm -hmm. um, and in my opinion, I think that's just what, I, what it comes down to. It just, it, it tells a lot about a person's, you know, drive and work ethic just by the way they market themselves. Mm. But, but also what you said now in terms of the bodybuilding, I'm an international um, pretty athlete. Mm. And it's very true. Like it's very, when you're competing on an international level, for example, I don't ever take my body fat percentage, but yes, it is lower than what it is mm. now. But for me, it's very much because I'm coaching, only I specialize in, in female transformation. So for me, it's very important to be a source of motivation mm. And there's a Discipline certain, as well. yes, and there's a certain goal that I have for myself in terms of my physical appearance, but I want my clients to also be like, I want to look like her. Mm. So each to their own, I guess. Um, everyone will eventually have their own reason as to how they want to look when it comes to fitness, but it very much, it needs to be aligned in, to your work, yes. I would say, yeah. definitely, especially if competing on an international level, if it's part of your lifestyle. I mean, this is now my sixth year doing it. I was, I was on stage three weeks ago. So, yeah, it really comes down to what you as an individual want for you and your, your brand. So in terms of where it, got, it started for you guys, did mm. you play sports in school? Mm. Or was it something maybe you were very good as a sport? Or was the gym just always it? I've, I've been very competitive, <laughs> did a lot of sport, netball, hockey, athletics, and I actually started bodybuilding at the age of 17. The way it got to bodybuilding was I took a, I took a break in matric just because it's a lot of stress, um, athletics, netball, hockey, and then I decided, okay, but what else can I do that's different, that can still challenge me, and that is where 
the bodybuilding, I, I saw a post on social media, a girl in a blingy bikini, and I was like, hey, but I like this. <laughs> what What is this? And that's that's how it started. I really wanted something to challenge me also out of school. So I knew starting at 17, turning 18 that year, I knew this is something if I do want to, you know, take it seriously, it's something I can do um, after school. Okay. All right. Um, so I used to play rugby back in primary school. I think ever since like I can even remember, I was always playing rugby, you know, athletics. I used to love sports in school up to the age of like, I'd say 14, 15, I was always playing rugby in school. And then 14, 15, I got introduced, you know, to a gym for the first time. <laughs> and uh, one of my coaches, he, well, introducing me to different routines. I'm like, I got, I, I fell in love with the sports. So I immediately got an, got a membership at Planet Fitness. It was like 100, 200 meters across, like from my from my school back there, back then. I, I think everyone started a Planet Fitness. Eh? Yeah, it's like it's <laughs> like remember. it's like the first. It, it's your first. <laughs> you're so proud just to be at a gym. Yeah. And like I think Planet is one of the more affordable options. Mm. Um, and you know, as a high school kid, you're broke. So I just went there, and like that was at like I think I started at age 14, and yo, week in, week out, week in, week out, I was just in there building, and like. The more I trained and the better I started looking, mm. I think the more confidence I got within myself, you know, mm. that, you know, there's, I can look better. And like, as I got, as I started to look better to myself, I don't really care what other people think, but for myself, um, that gave me confidence within myself and that actually spilled into every division aspect mm. of my life from there on forward. And then, you know, from there on forward, I think um, after school, um, I was studying accounting, like I told you uh, previously, I was studying accounting, went into the accounting space and into the tax space. But one thing that I always had was the fitness company that I started in my first year out of school. And also online-based coaching. Um, and I was basically just going through social media, which also allowed me, you know, to to learn the algorithms and things mm -hmm. like that. That's why, I'm, that's why I told you, like, I've, I've been studying the, the entire algorithm space for like a couple of years now. But Back to the point of fitness, um, yeah, the, the fitness company I started my first year out of school, and uh, that was one thing that allowed me to grow and grow as I was still in the accounting space, and that just took over. I mean, the more discipline I had towards my nutrition and my training, that allowed me to get more people in, you know, asking more questions, wanting mm -hmm. nutrition plans, wanting training plans. That allowed me to build relationship, nurture the relationship, and at the end of that, I think she will agree with me, is you get to a point where the marketing online isn't even necessary because most of your clients comes in through word of mouth. Mm, they do the marketing for you. They do the marketing for you. They do the marketing for you. Mm. And I think at the end of the day, it's all about passion and the way you treat the industry itself, the way you treat it, health and fitness. And mm. also people want to feel special. Yeah. And I feel like there's a lot of, well, if it's if that's lacking inside a business when it comes to coaching, they're all going to struggle to reach the top because people want to feel special. They want to feel loved. They want to know you're always there when they want to um, ask you a question. Accountability. Accountability. That check-ins. So they... Oh, the check-ins. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. Yeah, I think at the end of the day also, I think for every fitness coach, whether that's online or in the gym, we all went through a phase of addiction where we were living inside the gym. Oh my goodness. And I think from there, that's when the passion really started to, to fire up. Mm. And you know, you know, this is what you want to do. Like for me, example, I always, I've always known I want to go into the fitness industry, love being competitive, um, healthy fitness. But when you start taking care of yourself yeah. and going to the gym, and committing to your goals and as soon as that happens that's when you actually discover like you know this is really actually what i want to do yeah i agree with you guys and i think for me i, I also was the same i started when i was about 14 in the gym mm. and then you go through different I phases all jane started that <laughs> age eh? yeah because you get in, you get introduced to it but mm. i think even then it's different introductions so for me the introduction was as from a sporting point of view and then somewhere along the line, you find out about. Did you play? What did you play in school? Did you play soccer. Soccer. Only? Yeah, oh, okay. straight soccer. So we're training specifically for that. Yeah, at the beginning, so I used to go and do a lot of strength training and agility stuff. And then okay. somewhere along the line, I started training with the rugby boys. Nice. And oh. then that's when you pick up the aesthetic yeah. side of things, mm -hmm. and one thing led to another, and yeah. So now for me, having stopped soccer, which just was natural mm. that I continued, but I must say, like you, you do see the benefits. Like I believe that you know, if you want to feel good you got to look good okay. yeah and taking and you know there's a lot of stuff these days on social media that you must be happy within your own skin yeah. which to an extent we can talk about as well um 
I think that the only way that you can be happy in your own skin is if you're constantly working on it. Yeah. So if you're looking for improvement, um, whereas you obviously, I watch a lot of these uh, Piers Morgan interviews. I find them so funny. Mm. But when you get all those people coming on and they're just making these ridiculous arguments. Mm. And of course, it's opinionated. But let me actually ask you guys about this. So, you know, especially in the fitness community, it can be quite... Uh, hard to compare yourself to others yeah. right because what you're seeing on social media is not always a reality mm -hmm. first and foremost but also everyone's got different genetics everyone's got a different life path and i that believe it plays a role yeah mm -hmm. it's important to focus on what's best for you but how important do you think it is then to actually be physically taking action to working on the way you look to in order to feel better because i think it's something that is kind of demonized a bit on social media these days so to be honest, we even though we work so hard and we take care of ourselves and it's kind of part of our lifestyle, right? We also have bad days. We also yeah. have days we feel like, oh goodness, I need to change something. Something is not working. I'm in the gym, but I don't see progress. But that's only because we're hard on ourselves. So yes, even though you're always working and putting in that effort to make progress with, you know, loving yourself, yeah you will still always have that time where you don't love yourself. Yeah. And it's just because we're so hard on ourselves. Yeah. And, and that's honestly, I feel like the only reason for it. And it's normal. It should be normalized to mm -hmm. have off days, even though we are seen as the the people that other people yeah. should look up to. One thing that you just said is, um, I think she'll agree with me also. Um, one of the things that pulls, that actually causes a person to stop, you know, pursuing a healthy lifestyle, um, pursuing their nutrition, like continuing with their nutrition, is them thinking they kind of betrayed themselves by having one cheat meal mm. or two cheat meals, right? And they feel guilty. And, you know, from a coach perspective, from, from a nutrition perspective, you know, those type of things are actually key. It's necessary to have a cheat meal or a refeed. Mm. There's a um, quote I remember, something, it was uh, one salad won't make you skinny, just like one burger won't make, make you fat. You fat. Yeah. At, at the end of the day, I mean, if you know how to calorie count and you know how to macro count and you know like all of the little type of things, once if your coach if your coach learns you this mm -hmm. as a as a nutrition and health coach, if your coach learns you the, the the finer details, I mean the macronutrients, the micronutrients, the calories, and you 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 learn your clients or you teach them on how this works, how the how the how the numbers game works, mm -hmm. they'll be able to sustain that with or without you mm -hmm. going forward. And you want to actually teach them that knowledge because yes. You you don't expect of them to stay with you for 10, 20 years. Yeah, it'll be great to have them with you for a couple of years, and like you will always go out of your way to nurture that relationship and to give mm -hmm. your service. But um, obviously, it can get to a point where that person have the knowledge, you know, got the knowledge to to actually sustain themselves. And I think that is also why a lot of people, um, you know, get a health and fitness coach is to up to get the knowledge. If I was, for instance, an individual mm -hmm. and I wanted to get a health and fitness coach. I would actually change the knowledge and the information to get that and acquire that myself. And from there on forward, I could sustain that mm -hmm. going forward for the rest of my life. And just to add to that as well, like I always tell my clients, I like you said, I don't expect you to be with me forever. Yeah. That would be great. But my goal is for you to find balance, to understand flexible dieting, mm -hmm. um, to remove that fear when it comes to going, um, going to a celebration on a weekend or a wedding and seeing all the food, like removing that fear that they have for food. Yeah. So for us, and I feel that should actually be the goal for any health and fitness coach yeah. is to make sure that their clients eventually can go on their own and each client will yeah. be on their own journey. So maybe someone can, for example, for me, I do challenge intakes, the eight week in, in duration. Yes, of course, not everyone is going to have a complete lifestyle change in eight weeks, but I can change your life and, I, and that is what I promise. Yeah. So in eight weeks, I can teach you a lot whether that's just nutrition, whether that's training and nutrition, whether that's mindset. Um, but at the end of the day, I feel like for any coach, it should be a goal for them where the clients can walk away and say, listen, I've, I've gained a lot of knowledge. I can now eventually go on my own and make this a sustainable lifestyle. Do you think that there's, um, it's very hard for women to get into fitness, obviously much more than men. We were saying earlier how most guys get into it at like 14, 15, mm. and it's just, it's completely natural. Mm. Do you think it's maybe... It's definitely that. a lot harder for women. Do you think it's getting better? It's definitely getting better. And you know what's the most amazing thing is that you would think it's your ladies in their mid-20s. It's actually my moms. Mm. It's the moms who finally feel, you know, now is the right time. 60% of my female clients are ladies above 50. Yes. My, the biggest portion of my clients is leaning towards 35 and up. 
And it's amazing to see how they, even though they're older, it's not about, oh, you need to start young and build that that new lifestyle for you. It's just to see them decide and and just um, make that decision of, listen, now, now it's time to take mm. control over my life and I'm going to put myself first. Most of these ladies, they don't always... They don't, they don't necessarily want to have that hourglass figure. Yeah. It's for them about like staying healthy, you know, losing the couple of pounds they put on over the years, but just staying healthy and get to where they want. It's mm -hmm. like people, people always think they need to chase the hourglass figure yeah. or they need to chase, you know, the 10% man body, body look, you know, proportional aesthetics. But at the end of the day, you just need to know what you want, what you're happy with. And if you have the right coach and he can, or he, or he or she can provide that, then you're good. Um, I think just one thing has normalized in today's society is people thinking that once they start with the journey, they need to look a certain way mm. after a certain period of time. Mm. And if they don't get there, they lose motivation mm. or discipline and they fall, they end up, you know, falling into the same habits they used before. They, they, it, they, well, they were used to before. If we look at, at weight loss and muscle building, it's two completely different yes. phases. And, and our bodies go through phases. We need to go through the one phase to get to the other one. So ladies... For me now, for example, Lara, have you but ever had a bulk or a lean bulk? Me now, have I've, you ever I've, had... I've done one, yes. Um, I had 2,800 calories. Talk, let's, let's chat about the <laughs> mental effect. No, that I that loved had. it. It's, I loved it. For <laughs> me, that was one of my, it was one of the phases where I actually felt the most confident. I'm going to agree with you there, yeah. And sharing that as an example of something that I've been through and my experience, I love sharing that with my clients because ladies are so scared to go through a building phase or an improvement phase. I feel like improvement is so much, it's better on the, on the ear. Mm, yeah. um, you don't necessarily have to eat a lot of calories, but having slightly higher calories, keeping your protein high, you can still make progress. Mm. At the end of the day, it's just about where, what is it that the clients can be comfortable with? Some clients are willing to put in all that calories, mm. And for the body fat percentage to go a little bit up. But some ladies don't want that. They're willing to work a little bit longer, being more on maintenance calories. But at the end of the day, it's all about what the client mm. wants. Yeah, mm. so... I mean, I can, I can even dive into that. Um, I have a client currently that was sitting... When I got him in, it was in the same New Year's resolution. And he was sitting around 110 kilos. 12 kilos muscle mass. But I think his body fat towards... The, the body composition wasn't where he wanted it to be. Um... So what, what we did, what we agreed on was we're going to slice him, um, you know, b keep building, but slicing him and slice him first. So we slice him all the way to like 88, 89. He said he was happy with that weight. And then we started building him up again, but keeping his nutrition completely clean. And I got a check in like two, three days ago. And this man is looking like an absolute unit. Um, and how amazing is that? I mean, the feeling you, it's something you can't describe. To no, it's someone. like three different people. If you have, if I, if I can pull out the photos now, it's on my PC. It's this person, this person, this. It, they, they like mm. three different people. Yeah, it's crazy. And the journey see. is what creates that person at yes. the end of the day. It's, Everyone wants that quick fix. There's no magic pill. No, that the they journey can is what's make what makes That's it. That's the thing. The you best. start to to love yourself more and to really enjoy it, especially now that we've mentioned about being e eating high calories the moment you can actually start lifting more weight that's freaking motivating mm. like doing more push-ups being able to do a pull-up but the ladies don't understand that or clients don't understand that because they're not de there yet they're not going through it but the moment they do it's like instant they're like oh my gosh why haven't i done this earlier mm. like i've told you um but yeah at the end of the day also they are putting the journey in your hands i mean they're coming to us or whoever and it's amazing to know they're putting their trust in you to guide them into where they want to mm. be and where they're going to feel comfortable in. Yeah. I think the journey is the most important thing. I've learned that now, especially the journey in business. Is definitely the most mm. important because thing. you always want to get to a certain place and uh, you think when you get to that place, you're going to be happy. But the reality is, if you don't enjoy the, the mm. way to get mm. there, it's not really going to make a big difference. In yeah, the long because time. I think if you get to you that do. point, I mean, if you get to that point, what then? Yeah, what then? What's what the next then? step? So it's like everybody says, by the time when I get to this place in my life, I will be happy. No, yeah. it doesn't work like mm. that. Uh, because often you end up sacrificing the things you want to do for the thing you think you want. And then you get there and it's not what you expected. Mm. And how many times do you hear stories like this in any any field? So trying to get past that is the most difficult thing. Yeah. And in terms of your guys' personal life, mm. how, does, how do you mix it all together? So especially... I found um, that, you know, with, with business and even with fitness, there has to be some sort of 
lifestyle. So I don't believe in. I don't, no, so, so I don't believe. So um, I might. So I don't know if you guys agree on, agree with me on this, but I don't believe in balance. I don't think balance is a thing. No, it's, it's, the, <laughs> it's lifestyle is a thing. Lifestyle what I, what I mean by lifestyle is say you take your personal life, your business, and your fitness, yeah, and you combine it all into one. Yes. So it's not to say. I need to have a balanced life. I'm going to on the weekends just mm -hmm. clock off and do X, Y, Z. No, it's you it's, can't clock off on weekends. <laughs> can't. You have to work seven days a week, people but within off. all of yeah. that, you can do, do people. Things. What is that even? <laughs> <laughs> like I always say to people with the podcast, for example, I can come and do a podcast. We can do a podcast on Friday mm -hmm. on a four o'clock, or we could have done, done at ten o'clock this morning, as long as it fits into your schedule because it's yeah. a lifestyle thing, as opposed to saying I'm, you know, I'm just gonna do it on the weekends. I can focus Monday to Friday. Mm. So do you guys agree with that? Yeah, I 100% agree with mm -hmm. that. I think everything combined is is it's a lifestyle. It's the lifestyle at the end of the day. There's no such thing as balance. I 100% agree with you. Mm. Um, and if I have to look at it from my perspective, um, you know, when I used to work, when I used to work in accounting space, having a nine to five, I think you can you can maybe call that balance in a way because it was you know going wake up work going to the gym. And that's like Monday to Friday routine and weekends is then mm. your, your clock out time. And then when you eventually get out of that and you start pursuing what you want, you start drive, following your passion and you're like, you're, you're a business owner basically. Mm. Then things change up mm. because then you have to find a way to monetize your time and find a way for, you know, for your resources and your time to work for you. And that is when everything gets interlinked and intertwined. And that, I think you find balance within your lifestyle eventually mm -hmm. and within, within everything that you do. So for instance, um, if I, if my, if my clients work in that, if my clients or the companies that I, that, 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 um, that I have under my company, they're in the night scene, let's say for instance, and you know, we deliver services for that. Let's say content for instance on a night out. Um, I'm not necessarily there to get a drink or to get my social fix or, you know, my, but you know, just being there and you giving the services, you end up having a drink, let's say, mm. just for the fun of it, or, you know, meeting someone new. And like, immediately that's like a social, you know, a social kick or, you know, um, meeting a person you never thought you'd meet at that given time. So that's where you're almost like your personal life clock in with your work. Where it's getting linked. Where it's getting linked. Mm. Um, and, you know, also just by being there, you're not necessarily drinking vodka and Red Bull. You're drinking whiskey on the rocks because it's a little bit cleaner for your health. Mm. Or like, or if you have to calorie count, or yeah. you have to, you take away the sugar, but just let's, yeah. you know, like that's, I think that's where the health and fitness part can mm. come in as well. So there's like now three things happening at once in mm. one space. And, and it also opens a lot of doors to other things. Yes. So you might be thinking, okay, well, you have people doing the things for you, but if you are not always going to be there, you're going to miss out on amazing opportunities. Mm. So yes, maybe you don't have the time, but you need to, you need to make time. You need to, eventually time is... It's our, I think for business owners, our biggest time enemy. Is money. Yes, definitely. Time is money, yeah. And we need to really, you can't <laughs> plan. We, it, it's difficult to, to plan our days and how things need to flow and how it should be a normal day. There's no such thing. I mean, he, when was it? Two <laughs> days ago, he messaged me. We, do you call me? Yeah, you yeah. called and messaged. So we were like, we were on and off on a, ch and a um, you know, I think we were chatting even about the podcast and we were chatting about a couple of things. And yes. that, that was like from 12 and then at two and then at four <laughs> and then at seven. And, and I was like, I, I asked her, I asked her last night. I'm like, you're the first person that, you know, didn't ask me why, why are you messaging me at every second hour of the day? When do you sleep? Yeah. And, you know, sometimes it's, it's, it's difficult to plan out your day. Like, you know, people can say, okay, listen, I sleep from 10 to 4, 10 to, there's no way. I, I know, like, for now, like, I'm able to do that because, you know, things need to get done. I just make sure I get the time needed mm -hmm. for my body, you know, to rest. And I make sure I work it in within my day. See, it's, an, it's not a bad thing to, to not sleep in the evenings. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> but this, also, it doesn't mean time. he doesn't have his shit, you know, under, like, everything in, in one basket. Mm. Um at the end of the day, like I said, our days are, are never the same. So for me personally, I love to to schedule my things. So routine is a big thing for me, but I also need to understand. And it's kind of like a weak point for me where if things don't go as planned or if my morning doesn't start the way it needs to, it does throw things off yeah. a little bit. Um, but that's something I'm working on. 
But again, if you're in this space, being a business owner, you can't really always focus on things working to a T because yeah. you, you never don't stop get that. learning. You need to be open. Yes, you to need learn. to be open. Definitely. Yeah, you need to be open to that. Mm. I think finding a way to have a flexible routine is the key to success that yes. I found. Because you know, even if you're waking up, say, at six o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock in the morning, five o'clock, four mm. o'clock, whatever it is, mm. you know that when you wake up, this is the step by step process I'm going to follow in my morning. Mm to set me up for a good day. And then it doesn't matter if your day starts at six or at 10 because ultimately it'll flow yeah. correctly. Yeah. So as long as you have that routine in place, I mean, especially- You have a routine and you can plan ahead. Yeah. You don't necessarily go that way, but mm -hmm. if you have like a strategy to that plan, let's say for instance, a lot of things happen all at once, mm. but you're almost like prepared for that to happen. So let's say for instance, when my days go like this, so I get, you know, asked to do certain things or I always have a list where I write things down or add it to my list or add it to my notes. And, you know, like I try to categorize it, mm. what is more important, what is least important, but I always make sure I get it in within the day that I have to. Um, Even if it means working a few hours more for yourself yes. than for a boss. Yes. It's like I said, at the end of the day, and you do it for yourself at the end. Yeah, of the day. and 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 at this stage in in kind of our lives, you have the most energy and you have the most time. Yeah, and you have the least amount of risks as well. You know, it's really it's really up in there. It's what you want to do with it. So you can choose to spend your time, you know, doing silly things, or you can choose your time using your time to work and improve. Yeah, and that's like you said, the most important thing is actually improvement, right? So if you, see, I don't know, do you guys journal? I journal. Uh, oh, not a lot. It's not a daily thing for me. But like, no, 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 like not, but like, like I like to reflect on my yes. phone, yeah. So I, f I find that to be so beneficial. If you watch my TikTok channel, that's like one of my one of my platforms I use literally just for reflection. Exactly. So literally, looking, I write what yeah. I feel or write what I think mm. or write what I learn. Yeah. And you know, that's a good, that's a good way for, for people and my followers to almost like engage with it, to relate to it. Mm. And I've grown that platform to quite a, quite a big number of followers just by relating to people and what they feel like. Just by that, I've actually learned but so much about people. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone is, you know, living their own life, but so much, so many similarities, in my opinion. And you just need to know how to engage and interact with that. Absolutely. And I think as well, when you're just looking at your own personal life, there's a lot of value to be taken when you're watching someone do that. Mm. Because something I might be de struggling with at the moment from a personal point of view, if there's an open dialogue about it or a way in which you can see someone else, then you have something to relate to. And I say, hey, I've, I've noticed that I've noticed that you are struggling with, I don't know, waking up on time and not in the snooze. And I say, oh, well, I've tried this recently. It's helped me. You should try it. So mm. there's that dialogue and able to help, especially the others around mm. you improve. Mm. So talk to me about you guys' social media. It's obviously very good. What's the story behind it? How did it get to where it is today? Well, <laughs> if we look at how social media was used years ago, you can't compare it to how it is now. When did you go? When did it get a start getting a really big following? Would you say? I'll say. For me, it was around 2019, 2019. 2020. 2019 January, February. I started growing. Funny story, I it was I was basically just, you know, pushing social media, just like in, in general. I was even doing modeling gigs and I was <laughs> doing shoots. I went for like for for uh commercials and like soapies, like Afrikaans soapies. Like I still have the videos where I was like on Benelanders and Simnala and like that like just that little bit of mm. um that little bit of you know, image outside of social media, you know, that it, it allowed me to to tap into that a bit more, like I was just basically pushing whatever I mm. could at Taking that point. I didn't even know what I wanted, what my exact passion was, but I was always passionate about social media. Do you guys consider yourselves influencers or influencers? I don't like the, the word. I, I also wanted to say, I hate the word. That's why, that's the why word. I did the inverted commas because I also don't like yeah, it. Don't. I hate the word. Don't categorize me or place me under mm -hmm. everyone else. I don't know me. No, no. No, don't yeah, see, me. See, I think the problem is now, especially with social media, is everybody with a big following it's is categorized an influencer. Mm. I hate that word. But it's not, this, unless you are actively going out and um, tr uh, trying to, you know, especially in America, it's a big thing. Mm -hmm. But I think if you build a big social media following of something you're doing, you're not an influencer. Mm. Yeah. I agree. I Always when people say, you know, you're an influencer, I'm like, no, I'm, I'm not an influencer. I'm actually, I'm a coach. Like I, <laughs> that's my job. Yeah. It's to change lives. So I think a lot of people feel the same about the word of being an influencer i see an influencer as someone that is actually promoting a lot of brands that's doing a lot of collabs someone that s people can look up to also a source mm. of motivation definitely but it's more involved with a lot of things and not just necessarily someone that has its own brand and a lot of followers who's now suddenly an an influencer yeah 
you know, rather call me like a, call me a strategist or call me by call me by something. And I'd appreciate that comment way more <laughs> than calling me an influence because uh. I'm actually gonna feel a little bit insulted by that word. Mm. I don't really like the word because people get categorized. Yeah, yeah it's and like when, get, it's yeah. like I watched a, a movie and it was the and they did an interview afterwards and they were saying that um the gangsters don't like to be called gangsters. They like to be called businessmen in crime. Yes. Uh. Because it's a lot more of a respectful way of mm. saying it. So I agree with you. It's the mm. way in which you you speak to somebody um, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of these terms now, and I think it especially originated through COVID, you know, yeah. during that social mm-hmm. media time when everybody... TikTok took over. Yes. And they had to categorize the creators on that app. Yeah. And, you know, I think that just pulled over into mm-hmm. the word influence and that just took off. So what's your guys' opinions on being entrepreneurs? And I'll tell you why. It was in the podcast that Vusi Temba Choir did once. Um, and he said that you become an entrepreneur when your business no longer needs you. Until then, you're self-employed, yes. and then you become a manager, and et cetera, et cetera. So, kind of, what's your opinion on on, on becoming an entrepreneur? Mm. You know that journey that we're speaking about, yeah. and where would you guys say you're on that journey? I I totally agree with what you just said. I I feel like you are self-employed until you can mm. find a system that work that can do the work for you, and you have the time that can work, yes. do it for you. Um, and I feel like you become an entrepreneur once you. Once you learn and realize, uh, like take action towards, you know, getting the money or taking the money that you made from this business and investing it, reinvesting it. Into your business. Into your business or a new business Mm. or a new venture. And, you know, with that, with starting something new, I think as any entrepreneur would probably agree with me is you do a lot of market research, you do a lot of research into this and to that. And I think you need to be aware of everything that's going on in the world before taking the money Mm. made in this company and reinvesting it in something new. Um, you always need to be kept up to you know kept up to date. You with, need to be up to date as well as external factors. I think a lot of people also think um, an entrepreneur is just someone who has its own business. No, it's that's not an entrepreneur. That's it's um it's more than that. You need to be quick to respond to external factors. You need to know what's going on in the market. Mm. And just like you said, when the money comes in, what are you doing with that? It's either to grow your business or start something new. If you want to start something new, you need to have the knowledge mm. of that. And an entrepreneur is someone who does take risks, mm. definitely. Um, and you need to be willing to um, lose a few a few things as well. Unfortunately, that's yeah. part of the process. I, I remember when I just started off, I had um, obviously got samples made and I had my first batch of merchandise that came in. And obviously, it's, it's, it's a lot of money. You know, you can't just get five um, merch equipment in and, and then sell that. So when it got here, the booty bands couldn't even get over my knees and it was way too small. And for me, that was a massive loss in my business. But I knew that I had so much trust in the merchandise that goes together with my training that I will be able to make up for it. So I could either say, oh, damn it, it didn't work. I've lost money. Let's just leave the merchandise. Let's just not go into it again or order it again. Um, but at the end of the day, if you are very, if you trust your own product, you're very, um, how can I say, you believe in, in what you do and your products and your programs, then everything will eventually work out. Yeah, mm. totally agree. Would you say the merchandise, merchandise business is hard? So I had a fitness clothing company as well. Mm. I mean, I still technically still have it, but I've moved on from that business, but it was yeah. my first business I ever mm. started. Um, and I found it to be super enjoyable mm. and I, I got a lot of I learned a lot from it made a lot of um, success but at the same time flip it's difficult it's you know it's I feel it's both it's difficult in the beginning to get that trustworthy suppliers and to source the right products but once you have that then it's like this I can almost relate to this you know what two years ago I used to own a drop shipping cut business oh, yeah? just when it you know got into I think it was Front like time. training in 2021 yeah. bought a uh, drop shipping <laughs> business for I think 19k and you know what i did okay i will say i did okay um it was fun i guess you know learning learning that side you remember like when buying a drop shipping business you already have suppliers uh alibaba and all, like, all of those yeah. companies overseas um but you know taking a brand like that would, like buying a drop shipping business and building it from scratch was one of the most difficult things i mm, I, I, I i did back then well, I had to do back then and it took so much time just introducing the brand because there's no face and no personality mm. behind a dropshipping business also it's very difficult to get content to get 
influencers or creators in, you know, to promote your your business if they don't really if there's no personal touch to the business. So I I found that that was very difficult, but I learned from it. I made money, I made profit, um, but because it took so long, like the time invested it's versus worth. the return I got wasn't. Mm. But wasn't. you know what? It's also your school fees. And at the end of the day, fees, yeah. those businesses, and even up until this point, say the businesses we have now, or whatever we're working on, don't work out. At the end of the day, it's school fees. Yeah. Every every thing you do is a lesson, not yeah. a failure. Because the, the minute you change that, I've always found the minute you change the perspective on the way in which you look at things mm. um, and you don't say, well, I guess you don't use the words, it was a waste of time, it was a failure. Entrepreneurs will experience the most. Exactly. Ex mm. Experience more failures than anyone else mm. because you fail and you learn, you fail and you learn and you fail, fail, fail until you eventually get it right and you find a system that works for yeah. you. The trick is to not make the same mistakes over and over. Yes. That's, that is, that's the difficult yes. part. Mm. Um, and it's also very hard to identify. So I always have found that having mentors or people around you who can almost, in a in a sense, I don't want to say guide you, but kind of look at it from an outside perspective mm -hmm. and give you an opinion. I don't know. Do you guys have people like that in your lives? Yes, yes. definitely. It's, I'll say my business partners. Yeah, it's it's very important, especially having your own company or mm -hmm. starting a business. You need to remember that it's not just you, and you are not um, the most clever person. Just because it's your company doesn't mean you know everything. Yeah. You can always learn from other people, and having mentor mentors and people that you can look up to who are, in my case, I would feel definitely people mm. are older. I mean, we are young, so. I had to grow in that aspect. It would aspect. be older people. I couldn't necessarily. Mm. I always wanted to do things myself. I always had myself to count on. Um, and I learned over the past years that there's nothing wrong with having a business part to bring someone if, if mm. they can provide value that your company needs. And you know what? I have, I'll say I have three mentors. I have one big mentor. I have three, I'm going to say my business partners are my mentors. Um, and you know, just by following their journey, what they, where they started, where they got, that itself is is just something to look up to. I mean, all my business partners are about ten years older than me, five mm. ten years older than me. And you know, one my one of my business partners has about nine companies under his name now as well. And he's a motivational business speaker as well. So, being in the presence of someone like that and surrounding yourself with someone like that, you gain a lot of knowledge mm. and um, you learn. You actually learn through the mistakes that they made in their life. And, you know, it's, it's like information, your information, your knowledge, your knowledge, and it's just the exchanging of it that makes it so valuable. And it's also not just business partners. It's definitely the people you're surrounding yourself with. Yeah. You really need to surround yourself, especially if you are goal-driven and have a goal at a young age, which is now our scenario. You need to surround yourself with doers and thinkers. And your friends that you had on in school is not necessarily going to be the same friends. Yes, you might still have contact, but you you learn, not learn, you are introduced to other people that you can look up to, that you can see as a source of motivation for you to be better and vice versa. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's not not just the people that's, you know, inside your company, but definitely your everyday people yeah. as well. The ones you speak to daily, you spend your time with, with on weekends, or even in the week as we can decide when we want to spend time with them but yeah it's definitely the people that you surround yourself with yeah what i found is especially working with a lot of older people you got to take bits and bobs from everyone yes. to yes. form your type of person yes. i yes. think that's really the most important thing because with age comes experience yeah you know when when, uh, when people ask me like what podcast would you say resembles you i, I always give like five or six examples i say it's, it's very difficult to narrow it down and say i want to be like that i want this podcast to be like this no because mm. it's kind of like mm. you want it you want everything to be your own but you do take things from other people mm. right so it's even in any business i also have a lot of older business partners mm. and mentors and what's important is as well in those environments to feel like you belong yeah so yes. it's it was something originally when i started when i was 18 or 19 that i was super self-conscious about every time i'd go to a meeting like are they going to judge me because of the are fact that fit in? yeah am i too young to be yeah. here or whatever and i did get some backlash at the beginning i mean you get the backlash and you just grow with it exactly yes. and then as you get older you start to learn how to put yourself in a room and feel like you belong yeah. so it comes down to the way you dress yes. right so every time i show up to a meeting i'll be in a suit yeah it comes down to the way you talk, how you present yourself, yes. the fact that you speak with a sense of confidence. And mm -hmm. again, this is kind of tying into everything else you do, yeah. especially like if you are in good shape. Yeah. And you, it, That's where the health and fitness comes yes. in. Everything, because it makes a big difference. And you learn that as you go along. But I think it's something that people 
struggle to identify with. And that self-confidence is not mm. something that comes very easy. Mm. You know? I always tell people, as soon as you, 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 you start working on yourself, physically, mm. your entire life will change. The mm. people you surround yourself with, what, what you do, new interests, new ventures, mm. everything is going to change. Because once you become the person that you set out you want to you be, everything's going to change. Yeah, I agree if you that. go from 120 to 90, or your goal is to get to 110 from 90, once you get there, just by the way you appear, like the way you, you carry yourself, is going to put you in rooms and places that you would have probably mm. never been in. Just because of that. I mean, we're saying this now and, and people might think, oh, we, we're saying it. It's We're just saying it. But from my personal experience, I know I'm, I'm still young, 23, 20, 24. But a year ago, I definitely, I wasn't in the same mindset and space where I am now. Mm -hmm. And you grow by putting yourself out there. And yes, you were put into an environment where you felt uncomfortable. But you grew from that. Yeah. And you do it again and you grow. And now if I'm in the same place or in the same environment or scenario where I was a year ago, it's completely different. I can't even, you can't compare the two. Mm. And that's, it's normal and it's needed as well. It's needed to go through those phases to eventually discover and get that confidence yeah. to eventually dress up in a suit. Um, you, you need to feel comfortable to dress up in a suit. Yeah. Many people will do that and still feel uncomfortable. Mm. So you need to really um, go through that that phase of growth to eventually really be confident. Yeah, eventually you like just dressing in a suit at all times. I mean, that's me most. Yeah, of like last night I was even <laughs> suited up. Yeah, you will suited up. Uh, we did a we did a um, event with one of with with one of um, my clients and. You know what? You get to a point where you just want to put on that blazer mm. all the it's time. It's nice, nice feeling. It's a nice feeling. Mm. But even with you guys, I thought you were a lot older than what you are before I first met you. And that's just, off, mm. I guess, the way you, you put yourself out there. Mm. I thought right. the exact same of you. Yeah, but I think that's kind of uh, kudos to the exactly what we're talking about. Mm. Um, and not to blow smoke up anyone's ass, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's true though, you know. Yeah. Um, you start to, you start, you don't even realize, you start to come across to people as a lot older. older. And then when you actually tell people your age, they go. But you know what's the sad that. thing about this actually? And the reality of of being so young and being so confident is you really do lose out on people that were very special in your life because they feel that they are not at your level on your yeah. level and it's sad it's unfortunately part of life i guess but it's it's sad if you think about it mm. but then again we don't lose we gain yeah. we've gained and then we're going to gain more yeah. we are surrounding ourselves with other people that can grow with you yeah where we're just going to level up as much as i believe environment is huge i believe in managing your environment yeah. so these people that you know you grow up with a lot of people in school who were your really good friends mm -hmm. you don't necessarily have to just you know people they say to you get away from people who are not who are bad for you right so in my opinion you don't necessarily need to just cut them off and say mm. i'm never speaking to you again you you put it into a situation where like with me for example a lot of the guys i went to school with um i didn't see them for a long time when i was overseas and when i came back you know i won't call them up and talk to them about business but if I go to Stellenbosch like I was yesterday, I'll mm. ring up my mates and say, hey, I'm in town for a meeting. Would you like to grab mm. lunch? And then you go get lunch and you catch up. And then that's also a nice opportunity sometimes just to mm. switch the it, I agree switch with it you. off. And then mm. You just, have like mm. your different your different crowds um, for each scenario in your life, if we yeah. can call it like yeah. that. And that's it's needed. It's definitely needed. It's true. You don't have to cut them off. But it's also nice to still have contact with them. Yeah. You know, it's not that you don't want to be involved with them anymore and don't want the conversation. I it mean, doesn't have to be bad blood. No, not know? at all. Not at all. But also just because you're not having a conversation or um, not speaking as, as often as you used to, it doesn't mean you're not good friends. Mm. I mean, for my friends and as an example, um, I still love my, my school friends to bits. Yes, we don't see each other as often, um, but it doesn't mean I'm, I'm going to cut them off. Mm. Definitely not. I mean, we still, we're on a group and if, if there's something that's going to happen, you know, you, you, you get a notification and say, hey, let's go. And that to me is special. So, yeah, and, and just the general rule also, don't ever cut people out of your life or have bad blood. Yeah. Because you never know in the future who you might need and who might need you. I'm a big believer in energy. Yeah. Mm. Right. And I believe in um, affirmations and mm. being a positive force because i think if you are a bad person I'm, I'm pretty sure i've got a tattoo somewhere but <laughs> if you are a bad person then bad en energy will come yes. towards you yeah. but if you're a good person and you treat pe people with respect mm. then they pe will remember that so mm. 
one of the tattoos. I believe in the wheel. Yeah, one, always one, turning, right? one of the tattoos I'm getting on my on my ribcage in a month or two is um, this quote. It says, people won't always remember what you said or what you did, but they will always remember how you made them feel. feel. And mm. that's a really that's important thing to remember. True. Carries a lot of power. In business, yeah. in relationships, mm. in anything. Yes. Uh, leaving that impression, simple things like having a smile on your face or... Mm greeting them with eye contact, just those little details mm. really, really make mm. an impact yes, in anything you do. Mm. So in terms of the future for you guys, what, what, what's, uh, what are the goals? What are, what, what are we looking for to do this year? It's, to be honest with you, that's, it's, it's a very difficult question to ask, I feel for me personally, because there's always doors opening. There's a lot of opportunities um, coming your way. Mm. So it's hard to say, you know, at the end of the year, this is what I want to achieve. This is who I want to be. There's obviously planning that you're doing for the next two years. You know what you want to do in your business, where you want to improve, what you're going to incorporate next, what's coming next for LFA, for example. Mm. You have these things. Um, but for me, you know what, at the end of the day, it really is about just my goal and that's independence. So whatever it is that I achieve in the year, mm. I want to do something that will get me to independence. That's it for me. What does independence look like for you? For me, it's about, you know, going to a coffee shop, going on holiday and still being able to take my laptop with me. Mm. I want to work in my own environment. Yes, while I'm still working and they say time management, you know, it's it, time management Management is a is a real thing. You yeah, know we had a good conversation about this even last night. Yeah. Um, but for me, independence is to live life on my own terms, to make my own decisions as to where do I want to go now? Can I go? Of course I can go. Because I am the one that will make that decision and go and work wherever I want to. That's independence for me. And really not have to wonder, you know, will my bills be paid? Mm. I yeah. Whatever I take on, whatever I do, I want to make money. I'm going to make sure I'm making money. Whether that's with a partner, whether that's alone, that eventually is is the end goal to, to get to independence. Financial freedom. Yeah. Yeah. That's so a bit of a hard question to answer, especially for you. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to kind of get an idea about this. Mm -hmm. You know, the world is changing, mm -hmm. so things are different. So in terms of like that dynamic there, say mm -hmm. you, because being a woman is a lot different to being a man, right? you got a lot of things to think about with your future. It's for us, it's just we start on a business and then that's a whole life. You might want to have a family one day yes. and things mm -hmm. like that. So it changes the dynamic drastically. A lot. Because that, like we don't, I mean, it's not really traditionally the way men just stop working to take care of a family but sometimes mm. that's what a woman does mm. and in today's day and age it's getting a little bit more tricky because you're trying to balance both so kind of what's your what's your take on that my view on that yeah you know especially for yourself like mm. looking at your life if you kind of have an idea of where you want to mm. go in that regard it's funny because actually when i was younger i was in in a, a very long relationship but when that ended things change like this and the way you start to see your life it's mm. completely different especially when you're focusing more on your business, yeah. you um, surrounding yourself with with people that's very motivating. Uh, the, the dynamics do change. But I mean, if I quickly now just have to say how I see myself, maybe, you know, how things would go, definitely, luckily for me, I will be able to still be hands-on and do what I do. It's not that I'm going to have to, you know, say, I'm going to need to sit back and someone's going to have to take over. Mm. That's not going to be needed mm. because the way I'm currently doing my business is going to allow me to do that even if I have to take off. Yeah. So I'm not worried about that at all. Mm. And also, to be honest with you, being currently single almost three years, you learn a lot about yourself. Mm. And to be honest, I... I must say it's it's difficult for me to see a partner coming into my life right now because right now there's so much growth mm. going on. So for me to have a partner and to you know see my future and get and get to the the question you've answered is I'm gonna need someone that's very very goal driven yeah. mm. that has not necessarily similar interest. Yes, that will spark the the relationship, but in terms of goals, I feel like it's very important for my partner to really understand the scenario that I'm in, the environment that I'm in, how I'm doing my things. Because at the end of the day, I don't want him to to take over on all things. He, he shouldn't be the one that's going to feel like everything's going to now be um, thrown onto him and he needs to take over. Like just in general, we need to be on the same page of, of understanding where we are in each other's lives and where I'm in my so life. I recently went through the exact, well, I won't say, I, I, I just 
learned, you know, that same lesson again. And that like, I knew this. Yeah, but like, I think, I think every entrepreneur know this. Like if you're gonna, if you're gonna have a partner that mm -hmm. you want to take forward with you, or that you want with you in the future, to the long, to, like, let's say to the end, you need someone, like she said, goal driven and ambitious, but that person needs to be able to stick with you. Mm. We're not, we're, if we have to put it on a graph, if you're growing, if you're growing, let's say you're growing at this rate, this person needs to be able to stick with you or they need to go above you so that they can pull you back and you guys just need to keep because mm -hmm. if one is growing and one is stagnating, it's going to get to a point where you here and there's, mm. you there and there's going to be it's a conflict. lack of communication. Yes. Gonna, the communication is going to die out and, you know, I think you just outgrow the person at the end of the day. And it's not necessarily personal, but, mm. you know, if there's a lack of, uh, I think it comes down to the person just needs to be able to grow with you. I had the you, same thing as well. And I've yeah. struggled that in partners before. Nothing wrong with them. Nothing wrong, like good individuals, even like with friends, I'll mm. say. And it's good. It's good people. Like I've, I've, some of them, like they're really good. And it just came down, like one of the things that I realized came down to the fact that they can't necessarily grow. And I don't mm. necessarily expect them to mm. like be there because it's unfair, mm. um, but it will always play a role. Mm. I think that your the goals that you set out for yourself and the goal that that person set out for themselves within three years, five years, 10 it years, needs to be needs aligned. To be aligned. It, needs, it needs to be aligned and they need to be action towards that. At it's their own pace, but they need to be able to grow. They also you. need to be goal driven as well. They like I had that, I had the a similar issue this year, where I also got out of a relationship. But I was dating somebody from from Europe, mm. and I think what really was the problem was be, while you both have ambition, it's one thing to have ambition; mm. it's another thing for that ambition to be somewhat aligned. Yeah. Mm. So if you're not heading, in, it doesn't have to be say like you start dating an entrepreneur and you're just a fitness person, take out a business out of the way, just as an example. Yeah. doesn't necessarily mean that you guys need to be heading to the same place, but it needs to be in the same direction, yes. whether that's where you want to live, what you want to yes. do with your life, where you want to be at a certain time. And you have to be equally driven in your goals. And I think what's more important is, and this is the same beyond just having a partner with both your environment, mm. is that environment pushing you in the right direction yeah. so there are days where i'm gonna wake up and f and feel like shit and you're gonna wake up feeling great and you're gonna feel okay but you feel great so you're gonna get us to go with you yeah mm. and vice versa and yes. that's the kind mm. of ideology in any relationship yeah I, I think you guys have it a lot more easier than what what woman has because i'm gonna say it as it is let's hear it let's hear it unfortunately for us as women, guys do have their pride, eh? So it's very intimidating for them to to be in a relationship with a younger girl that's already, you know, there. I'm saying it as it is. It's fact. I think it and comes down to the man. It That's how I feel. It personally, it definitely, not personally, it definitely comes down to the guy, the guy. and where he is in his life. But it's definitely harder for me to get a guy than for Doesn't you guys. They feel threatened. They do. And I'm not saying it from my mm. own personal experience. That's what general, people say. That's yeah. that's like honestly. You feel threatened by your success. Yes. So it's it's a lot harder for, for me to get someone. I'm not rushed at all. I'm just, you know, talking in general. Mm. Than for you guys to, to get a woman that, you know, is willing to do yeah. that growth with you guys. Mm. No, I, I think you're right. I think mm. it definitely, it's, it's, it's harder. Um, if you have to put it on scale, that's true. Yeah, but yeah. I think I think it also just depends. Like for me, what's always been the hardest thing was finding a woman who kind of was in the same mindset as me because mm -hmm. you, you want somebody who's going to be supportive of you, but that's also kind of difficult at the same time because you don't want somebody who's overly dependent. Mm. So it becomes a tricky dynamic. So mm -hmm. for every person, it's different, right? But I do think you're, you're onto something, in fact, that it's being hard. Mm -hmm. I think what's even harder is the fact that uh, it's you don't find many people the same age dating these days anymore. No. no. So there's a big age gap, and that's yeah. like. But that to me, for example, is not a problem. Mm. The age gap for me is not a problem, mm. but in general, I mean, if you look at guys, guys are women are more mature than men. So for me, I would always look at an age range of 28 and up. 30 is like ideal for me, mm. but it's difficult to get a guy of that age like to old. date a younger girl that already is you know she has a, a shit yeah, she like she know together. she know mm. she has a shit together she knows where she wants to be because they find it intimidating maybe because they're not there yet uh, 
I don't know what it is. No, no, no. But... You know what it is? It's society normalizing a man to be more successful than mm. a woman at that given age, mm. and you escaping the norm <laughs> is what is causing the threat mm. at the end of the day. I think I think it'll always be a problem. I think yeah. um, mm. f for any for any man to want to date a woman who's more successful than him, mm. I don't. It's very very hard mm. to come by. Yeah. No, it is. Um, and le unless you guys are on the same growth journey, yeah. so. At the end of the day, it comes down to the growth journey again. Get, again, yes. Again. It, it comes the, probably the worst thing you can do in, in any business relationship, personal relationship, is start comparing bank accounts. It's the mm. worst thing you can do. Mm. It shouldn't, in my opinion, even be a topic of conversation. When it comes to a business partner, I mean, I found this as well. When you like, when I do a business deal, and I'm starting to learn this a lot now, and what I'm getting involved in, nobody ever asks you how much money did you make on the last deal. Yeah, they ask you what deals have you been involved mm. in. Mm. Not because quality of your deals. Yeah, yeah. So they don't give a, they don't give a damn how much money mm. you've made. They care what deals you did, so they can mm. look into the success of it. Yes. Mm. And it's the same like that within any relationship. It's not to say to you how much money did you make last month. Mm. Mm. It's more what did you achieve last month? I mm. signed four new clients, or mm. I did X, Y, and Z events, right? And be only the money only becomes a problem. Like I said, we're in our twenties. At the end mm. of the day, as long as we are doing good or mm. doing great it doesn't really make that big of a difference it matters later in life when mm. money becomes a real thing yes i agree i totally agree with that but it's always going to be a problem money yeah. will always be a thing um unless you know the other person is also in the right mindset in the same mindset than what you are yeah and unfortunately not they need everyone to be aligned. they need to be aligned and not everyone is there yet yeah yet or everyone yeah it's unfair of us to ex to to expect that we definitely everyone. don't expect so i don't even go out of my way anymore to you know pursue or like to to actually go out and look for that anymore because mm. i know it's rare to find mm. and i know it's unfair of me to expect that of every walking individual in mm. that room yeah i totally agree with that what do you guys think about working in cape town i think it's a bit slow it's very slow oh everything is so delayed very 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 slow everything mm. is delayed mm. I like I was I saying like I don't know what time you guys go to the gym in the morning, but I like to go like at five or four thirty, like mm. when it opens. Yes, get it over um, now with. Yeah, like I like to go first thing, mm. but flipping out the roads are empty and the gym is like empty in Joburg at five o'clock in the morning. You will see traffic. It's yeah. and it's packed. Five o'clock in <laughs> the morning. There's always traffic thing, in Joburg. One thing that I appreciate. <laughs> one thing I appreciate of like Pretoria and Johannesburg, is the pace and the this, hustle and the mm, hustle. hustle. That's the one thing in Cape Town. <laughs> if you find your industry and you know how to monetize and to leverage it, you'll do well. But you need to know, like, living in the city and working in the city, mm -hmm. it's delayed. Mm. If you want something, you're going to get it in three days. You're not going to get it on the day. Yeah. If, you want, if, if, if you're giving someone a big task, you're going to get it in a week. Yes. People here are just living their life. And, you know, don't tell me you want it now. I'll give it to you when I can. Mm. Do you want to live in Cape Town forever or do you guys want to move somewhere else? The idea is there, definitely after traveling and seeing how other countries operate and just how they, they do their things, you know, it's it's very motivating to be in that space. I'm taking Dubai as an example. Mm. I mean, to many places, Tokyo, also amazing. But Dubai specifically. Um, well, are you doing Dubai in September? Say again. I'm doing Dubai in September. I'm doing Dubai again in October. Mm, November. Nice. Yeah. Good. November. Dubai, you guys can can definitely relate to what I'm about to say. The pace and how the hub. people, yes. yes, and that is motivating. Yes. When I walked the streets and I and I saw the people and, and the lifestyle, but mm. not just the lifestyle. You you can really see the people they they take care of themselves. They take the work seriously. Um, There's a reason it's they're one motivated. Of the best in the world. Mm. Actually, probably isn't that ranked the richest city? Oh, it is definitely yes. with the people there. Yes. But look, I've done a lot of traveling in my life, and what I can say is. You know, Dubai is a great place when you're young, but you speak to a lot of them there. They say they won't raise a family there because it's mm. too simple. It's too safe. You want to, mm. and it's very interesting. I've spoken to a lot of um, businessmen now who are overseas and have come back, uh, and I can speak out of experience. I spent, I luckily, spent a lot of time in Europe. You somehow always find your way back to South Africa. That's exactly what I was going to say. After you really this do. Is what I want for my companies and possibly the ones that I will open in the future is for them to become internationally automated. That mm -hmm. allows me to go anywhere I want. Still coming. Working it in, like, that will obviously come in as a working expense, of course. But mm -hmm. being anywhere I want at any given time, at any time of the month, but I know for a fact, one, I will always end up, I'll always end up back, back in the city, mainly mm -hmm. because of the culture and the people. Because Even though we just said it's so slow. It's like slow. We... But South African people mm -hmm. and the South African culture, there's just something about this. There's about a lot it. of opportunity. And here. there's a lot of opportunity mm -hmm. for growth. 
in every possible way. They say Cape Town is, pos- is the best place in the world to invest, mm. isn't it? And well, do your growth here and then take that and just yes. Also, put it's it international. Cape Town is a little international hub of its own. Mm. I mean, mm. when I first moved to Cape Town, living in Pretoria and Joburg, and like getting here, it was it was such a adjustment seeing all oh, of these said. new people, mm. like stri- like different accents and international people walking around. Like yeah, you meeting. I, I remember I was sitting on the beach and like it was we had Dutchmen there, and then like, right next we had a couple of ladies from Spain, and then you go to, let's say you go to the 41 or you go to one of the restaurants there in Camps Bay, for instance, and it's just people from all over the world. I think this was like November, December. I stay in Camps Bay all the time, straight Germans. Yeah. And like my family is Ar- German, um, so I just hear all the German speakers and I'm like, yeah. oh, I get so confused. And it's crazy. That was that was like something so exciting at first mm. when I first moved. It was like seeing all of these people from all over the world mm. in one place. And like it, it never stops. Mm. It never stops. It's like coming in, coming out. And now I'm working in an industry where I'm actually, I have more knowledge when they're coming in from where they're coming in and where they place themselves. And that allowed me to obviously mm-hmm. leverage that from that perspective. And, you know, if I if I have to look back on like what I find exciting a year, year and a half ago versus what I find exciting now, it's two different things. Mm. But if I have to say Cape Town in general, I think this is a place that I 100% will come back to every time. I think it's easier for you to say because you, you stayed in Joburg. I stayed all over. Well, all over, but I mean, you you know, coming from Joburg specifically, mm. where it's completely different to here, mm. um, and being able to make that comparison. Oh, you grew up. You grew up here. I grew so up you, here, you, so you, it's it's you different. Oh, yeah, you've never lived in Joburg before. Mm, no, only go for out? shows, go for maybe for a week or a weekend. Never physically, you know, stayed there. Mm. You definitely should. You just think go, so? Just go move there for like half a year. I promise I you. I don't think I'll enjoy it. You know what? I think it's I a, think it's a different. It's a different. I think if you if you really like in that hustle mode and you're in that drive, it could be beneficial. I think yeah. Joburg's mm-hmm. one of these places. Especially where, Santon. Yeah, the people who I hate, wanted to say Santon. So, yeah. I, so I live I live in Santon or Hyde Park, which mm. is next to Santon, and I can tell you right now, the people who hate Joburg are the people who are not trying to work and make money. It's yeah. that simple. Mm. They're not using it to their advantage. Yeah. You know what I? You know what like talking about this now is back when I used to live there, I never understood why people moved from Cape Town back to Joburg. And it was always like a thing like, why are you mm, leaving it is a the thing. lifestyle Everyone from Joburg wants to come to Cape Town. You know, they call it like a rat race and going there and work like a rat. But once mm. you start making, or like once you get into the hustle and you understand, you understand Joburg versus Cape Town, then you can almost like understand why people are moving back there. Mm. Because Joburg is also layered like Cape Town. And it's just about Climbing the layers, climbing, climbing, climbing the steps and getting to where you need to be. And then from there on forward, you will experience the perks of mm. what Joe Buck Santa really has to mm. offer. Um, and I think moving around is also sometimes helpful with meeting people. Yes. So like I'm a, I'm a big believer in getting to know the person because mm. you never know what might come out of it. I mean, we were speaking before about some of the stuff you're doing, which ironically has a lot of relation to what I'm doing yeah. in two different cities. Mm. So one day in the future, maybe we can work together on something. No, you don't we'll know. probably will. So you get an idea of people, but mm-hmm. you really, if you take the opportunity, like I, I believe in when you see someone going up to someone and introducing himself, the only thing you don't do is approach a woman in the gym. I mean, that's, that's something that nobody does. <laughs> One thing I like to do is whenever I approach myself in public or like approaching, I never like to speak about what I do mm. or what, who I am. What I, I, like, I always like to try and get to know the person first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See who they are as an individual. Mm-hmm. And you know, if the conversation goes well and you get to know that person in time, the other the other factors will just flow over. But I can tell a lot about a person on how they introduce themselves to me. And mm. um, yeah, if you're out in public, one of the things I can probably tell a person or advice I can give is just be yourself and talk about who, I won't necessarily say what you are. Mm. Don't label yourself. But don't you feel, I, I feel I hate talking about myself in any way if people are asking. I feel asking, like the way you carry yourself mm. will you tell can, that you, person yeah. exactly what type of individual mm. you If you are. do it more often, you become very, very good at yes. giving an answer you feel comfortable with. So you don't have to go into detail and say like everything you do. Mm. Just say, I'm, I'm a fitness coach. Mm. Mm. Or if that's just a one word answer, yeah. you know. I think it's more just that idea of, uh, you know, the person wants to just say the best things about themselves. Mm. I, f- I feel like that's that's kind of, I mean, someone will probably ask you, you know, what are you doing? Mm. I don't mind answering that, but I always feel like now I need to just say who I am. And I don't want the other person to think like you're bragging yeah. because we, we do have mm. our own way of doing things mm. and my own company. And people's and, skills are so important. Uh, no, having people skills is so important in the mm. industries that we move in. You need to be able to know 
you need to be able from the start, from the get go of that conversation, you need to know exactly what's up, like pinpoint what that type, mm. who that person you is. You need to be comfortable in being able to speak to and other read. people. You need to be able to read the room and read the read the, the conversation that you're having. Um, and that will allow you obviously to tap into certain things and to allow you mm. to, you know, know when to speak and when not to speak, mm. what to say, what not to say. Um, but also that's one thing that you're going to learn in time. I also think that for you, he's a bit more ad- advanced in that level compared to me because he's more out and about. It's, I have to be. You, I want to say now, you yeah. have to be. So he can learn that very quickly. For me, for example, I go out. Um, I'm very comfortable in talking to people, but he will definitely be a step ahead when it comes to that in being able to read people easily, you know, come not, draw got, conclusions. I almost got forced into it. I'm not saying forced into it. Like what I'm doing mm. puts me in a lot of rooms mm. with a lot of people. And it's not necessarily a bad thing because I get I to know. To That's good. I get to know every type of individual there is. Um from age to race to culture to whatever mm. it is, industry, jump back and forth, call it, and I get to know every person, you know, internally, external, externally. And mm. that has allowed me over the past two years to to tap into people's skills that I probably thought I never had. And I think that is also one thing that took me mm. to, where, to where I am today. So you know, reading mm. a room and reading a, a, a conversation, reading a person. And finally, what's your guys, um, to end off today, what's your guys' piece of advice? I'll give you, let you give advice for the men and you for the women in terms of business, fitness, and life. If you could maybe give your, like, 18-year-old self some no, advice. No, you I'll go first. Yeah. Um, what, I can, what, what advice I can tell, especially the gents, especially people my age, the gents my age, is don't let yourself get forced by other people into what you're doing today. Um, I, I, f- I feel like pursue your passion, pursue pursue what sets your soul on fire and your heart on fire. And, you know, by doing that, you're immediately placing yourself in a mindset and in a, a good headspace, which will allow you to even work harder and have like that extra drive. Mm-hmm. And that the money will, oh, the money will come, the money will follow. You just need to be happy in that, be in a good headspace because being in a good headspace will allow you to, to tap into new skills, um, you know, tapping into new passions, you know, you, you'll get to know yourself by being in a good headspace. And if you're constantly pursuing something that you don't want, or you're pursuing, um, you're pursuing career or like a job that you, th- you feel like is expected of you, you will never get to that point mm. of, you know, tapping into the best version of yourself. And in regards to health and fitness, that is basically just to keep that it, it plays a role. It, it plays it plays an additional role. You know, just start and mm. that health, health and fitness and building on yourself is something that immediately spills over to that. I think health and fitness allowed me that like that one that one concept on its own, the business mm. and like the journey has allowed me to make my decisions that I made to get out of what I what I used to be and pursuing what I one hundred percent want. And I think it all play, plays a role. It's interlined, intertwined, and um, yeah. Follow your passion, and oh, one thing: health and fitness teaches it, it. It teaches you discipline, and discipline is what you need in the game. And I think, yeah, it's just all intertwined. So mm-hmm. follow your passion, and you know, do what do what you want, do what sets your soul on fire, and the money will follow. That's one thing I can say. Yeah, everything that Paul said was spot on, but I think when it comes to women, that label of as we've spoken earlier, and we've said that you know, women, men are more. They normally the the breadwinner and the the more powerful one in in the relationship. But whether you're in a re- relationship or not, I think more women should own their shit and really stand up for themselves and just go for it because women are so scared, and it's it's normal. We are scared of judgment. Mm. We are scared of failure. We're scared of what other people are going to say. I think when it comes to social media, even a woman mm. gets way more judged than a man. Yeah, oh, yeah. and form. and there's it's a lot of things that that has an impact on our on our overall mm. mood and our actions. Well being, yeah. So for a woman, I would just say the best advice is to really just own who you are. And if you have a goal, like really go for it and just start. Mm. It's not going to be easy. You are going to lose money. You are going to go through a lot of obstacles. Um, it's going to be tough. But as a woman, you can do it. It's, it's not just men that needs to be there and level up very quickly. Mm. Women can do that too. And to trust your gut. That's probably the best advice I've ever received. Whether this is in fitness or business or whatever environment, um, you really need to trust your gut. And from experience also, 
you gotta listen to yeah. yourself mm. well, awesome guys powerful thank you so much for coming on today i've enjoyed this yeah. a little bit of a, so much for having us. Yeah, a little bit of a different type of podcast than what i've done yeah. in the past but it's always nice yeah, yeah. we enjoyed it Absolutely. thanks for having us and thank you guys for listening and watching we'll see you next time